Hello everyone. In this session, I want to talk about resiliency in SAP CAP applications. Uh, so if you have worked with SAP CAP applications, uh, when the end user makes a request to your CAP application, your OData service, uh, based on whether it is uh, using the destination service to connect to the publicly available service or using a combination of a destination service and connectivity service to connect to your on-prem system, uh, it is making a remote service call. Uh, so whenever the CAP application is going to make a remote service call, uh, it is uh, imperative uh, that you also add resiliency into your remote bound call. Uh, the reason is that the external call, this remote call, uh, can fail for a variety of reasons. For uh, the system may be temporarily down, uh, and you need to build some kind of robustness in your external calls uh, so that even if the system is down for a couple of seconds uh, because of latency issues or any issues uh, that may occur, uh, your call can go through success. Successfully. Obviously, this is not a catch-all uh, because if the system is completely down, uh, then you will not be able to uh, make a successful call. Uh, but any temporary issues, uh, you want to make sure that your call is able to sustain that. Uh, and the way we can do that is by adding some resiliency patterns. And a couple of patterns that I do want to talk about. Uh, so one is the timeout pattern. Uh, so timeout pattern is the most basic uh, resiliency pattern. Uh, so so let's say here, in this case, the system is actually up, uh, but the system is taking uh, quite a long time to uh, to answer your request. Uh, so what you can do is you can set a timeout for how long the application can wait, and then you can time out. Uh, and what this can do is uh, it can prevent the application from becoming unresponsive. So you don't want uh, the user to be waiting for like 30 minutes uh, for a response to come back. Uh, so let's have a quick look at how this uh, timeout works. Uh, obviously for this, uh, I need kind, some kind of a SAP S4 HANA system uh, where I have a complete control so that I can uh, either stop it or make it unavailable and so on. Uh, and in order to do that, uh, what I have done is I'm using a mock SAP S4 HANA server. Uh, and there is a GitHub repository. I'll put it in the uh, description link below. Uh, and you can clone that uh, repository and you have a mock SAP S4 HANA system. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to run the Smart SAP S4 HANA system in port 8081. Uh, so uh, let me go ahead and run this in uh, port 8081. Uh, and if I go to the API.js file, I've also made some small modifications here. Uh, so right now, uh, there is no delay. Uh, so this is like the, uh, the uh, dream scenario where everything is working fine. Uh, I also have uh, the application itself, my resilient CAP application. Uh, and what I can do is I will go ahead and comment these lines of code. And uh, the GitHub repository, I will put this uh, in the description uh, also. Uh, so this is uh, the way you would actually make a call of with the SAP CAP uh, to the remote system. Uh, fairly straightforward. Uh, you're just making a send request. And we are not using any uh, additional uh, third-party libraries at all. Uh, so let me go ahead and start this. Uh, so if I go ahead and... Uh, uh, run this application. Uh, so I should be able to make a call uh, because I have the mock server up and running. And at this moment, I'm just going to read from the mock server. Uh, so if I go to my request.http file, and uh, let me go ahead and make a call to the business partners, uh, I should uh, get the response back. And you can uh, see that I got the response back. Uh, so let me go ahead and close this. So this is the dream scenario. Uh, everything is working. I'm making a call, and this is are working fine. Uh, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this uh, so that uh, I'm going to simulate uh, a scenario uh, where the server is taking forever to respond back. And what we want to do is uh, we want to uh, have some kind of a timeout uh, that allows uh, the application to timeout uh, so that it uh, so that it doesn't look like it's unresponsive, right? Uh, so here I have on the SAP S4 HANA system, it's going to take 90 seconds uh, before it sends the response back. Uh, so now let's uh, go ahead and uh, run this. Uh, uh, let me restart it because I made some changes. Uh, and 
I will also go ahead and run the same application. So let me make sure my uh, mock server is up and running. So mock server is up and running. Uh, so let me go ahead and run this. And you will see uh, that the system is a little bit unresponsive. Uh, so it's going to wait. It's going to wait. Uh, but what you will see is that the CAP application uh, has the CAP framework uh, has a built in timeout of 60 seconds. Uh, so you don't have to uh, do anything uh, to have this uh, timeout back. Uh, there is a 60 second uh, timeout pattern. So after 60 seconds, uh, this uh, request will fail uh, gracefully. Uh, now, uh, for other integration uh, resiliency patterns, so this is the only uh, resiliency pattern that uh, the uh, that the uh, uh, that the uh, 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 SAP CAP framework uh, has. Uh, so if I go to the SAP CAP documentation, uh, so let me go ahead and pull up the SAP CAP documentation. And if I search for resiliency, so if I search for resiliency, um, uh, you will notice that uh, there is no resilience library provided out of the box for CAP Node.js. Uh, but uh, what the documentation says is that we can use any packages uh, provided by the Node.js community. So, uh, so it's up to the user. Uh, so we give you enough flexibility. And there are quite a few uh, Node.js packages out there, open source, uh, that you can use. And the one that I recommend uh, using is async retry and also opposum. Uh, uh, and the reason why I say use async retry and uh, opossum is um, uh, is because uh, the SAP Cloud use uh, SDK SAP Cloud SDK uses those libraries. Uh, so you can go ahead and use the same libraries. Uh, so you can look at async retry npm module. Uh, you can use this npm module, uh, and also you can use the opossum. Uh, NPM module, and this is also something that you can use as well. Uh, but anyways, uh, the timeout, uh, uh, I, as I was mentioning before, uh, it comes for free. Uh, so you can see that uh, this thing timed out after uh, 60 milliseconds or, six, uh, or 60 seconds. Okay, so let me go ahead and close this. Uh, and what I'm going to do next is go to the next pattern. Uh, so only the timeout is uh, supplied out of the box uh, by SAP CAP, uh, but let's uh, try this uh, with retry. Uh, so now I want to use some retry patterns. Uh, but before that, uh, let me also quickly show you what the retry pattern is all about. Uh, so if I go back to my slide deck, uh, so the retry pattern, um, what it does is uh, it retries a failed operation a specified number of times, uh, usually with the delays between attempts. Uh, so if your server is uh, temporarily down uh, or you're unable to connect to the server for some reason, uh, instead of immediately uh, giving an error message uh, saying that, uh, hey, I'm not able to connect to the system, uh, what it can do is it can retry a few times and you can set it up. And for this, uh, like I said, uh, we will use the async retry try pattern. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, add that as a dependency. Uh, so you see I have added the async retry to my package, to my, uh, to my application itself. Uh, and then here uh, I want to use the async retry. Now adding the async retry is fairly straightforward. Uh, so uh, you can see that uh, uh, this is the actual original code uh, without any of the resiliency. Uh, but uh, when I add async retry, uh, so uh, first of all, I have to make sure that I bring in uh, async retry. Uh, so I have the retry uh, module here. Uh, and then I can add this extra couple of lines of code. Uh, so this these lines of code uh, is going to give me functionality for retry. And by default, uh, the number of retries is 10, uh, but I changed it to 5. 10 seems a little too excessive for me, so I changed it to 5. And the way retry works is it uses an exponential factor. Uh, so what it does is, uh, uh, by default, it starts at 1, uh, 1 second. It'll try after 1 second. Uh, then it will try after 2 seconds, and then it'll try after 4 seconds. Then it'll try after 8 seconds, and 16, and so on. Uh, so to the power of uh, 2. Uh, so you exponential uh, factor of two. Uh, that's the default. I'm fine with that. Uh, so what I will do now uh, is uh, let me go ahead and start this uh, uh, application again. Uh, 
And in this case, what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to actually stop this uh, server completely. Uh, so my mock server is not running at all. Uh, so if I go to my application here, uh, and now if I do run this uh, 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 request, if I do send this, okay, so let me go ahead and send the request. Uh, my server is actually down. My SAP S4 HANA mock server is actually down. Uh, yeah, I believe it is done. But what I will also do is I will remove this uh, timeout. Uh, so let me go ahead and remove this uh, timeout. Uh, just have uh, the regular way of uh, running it. Uh, but the server is down, so this is not going to work. Uh, but it's going to retry five times uh, because we have the retry set as five. Uh, so let me go ahead and send the request. Uh, you can, oh, let me first run this uh, application, npm run start. Uh, so the application needs to be running. Uh, so, but my backend SAP PS4 HANA system is down. Uh, so now uh, when I go ahead and run this uh, business partners, you can see it's failing. Uh, so it will wait for an exponential factor of five times. So one, two, uh, four, eight, and 16. Uh, but before that, I'm going to go ahead and start the server. Uh, but you can see that it hasn't failed yet. Uh, so the um, so it's uh, retrying a few times, or at least five times it should retry. Uh, and now you can see that it has uh, come back with the data. So so even though the system was down temporarily, uh, we were able to add some robustness to our external call and be able to get the data back from the server. Uh, so now the next thing I want to add is another resiliency pattern. Uh, and for this, uh, we are going to use the Opossum uh, model, uh, the NPM module. And uh, this pattern is called the circuit breaker pattern. And what it does is uh, let's assume that the server is uh, unable to handle all the requests. Uh, let's say 10 requests comes in and the server is uh, maybe overloaded and it can only do like five requests. Uh, so we don't want to repeatedly ask the server again and again and overload it even more. Uh, so what the circuit breaker pattern is going to do is it's going to open the circuit. And by opening the circuit, what it what I mean by is uh, uh, this application is going to reject all the requests or redirect it until the server uh, becomes uh, healthy uh, in the, in a sense that un until it becomes uh, not overloaded, right? Uh, so that's what the circuit breaker does. Uh, and then uh, after like maybe 30 seconds or so, then it will close the circuit just to see uh, if the request is uh, passing. And if the request passes, uh, then it will completely close the circuit. It will half uh, close the circuit uh, then uh, and see if uh, the request is working fine. And if the request is working fine, then it will completely close the circuit. So all the requests goes through after that. Uh, and what it allows you to do is uh, uh, it allows uh, the backend system to not get too old overloaded uh, by repeated uh, uh, by repeated requests uh, whenever the server is overloaded. Uh, so for this, uh, I mentioned that we are going to use the opossum. Uh, uh, this is the uh, uh, the uh, NPM module that I'm going to use. Uh, so for here, uh, I have a few options that I can use. Uh, so what it's going to do is uh, for 10 seconds, uh, it's going to check uh, how many uh, how many of the requests failed. Uh, so if 50% uh, of uh, the requests failed in 10 seconds, uh, then it knows that the system is not doing well. The system is, uh, uh, so it needs a break. Uh, so what it's going to do is it's going to uh, close or open the circuit so that uh, the requests don't go through. Uh, and then it will wait for five seconds and then before attempting to close. And then, and then it will again see if uh, uh, the request fails uh, or if, if the request succeeds, then it will keep, uh, it will completely close the circuit. Uh, so for this, uh, let me go ahead and uh, go ahead and uh, comment this line of code. And I will go ahead and uncomment uh, this uh, line of code here. So now uh, we are using all three patterns. Uh, so we have uh, uh, the timeout, we have the retry, and we have the circuit breaker. Now, here is a very important thing that you need to know uh, is so when you have these resiliency patterns, uh, it, is, uh, it is very important that you have the order matters. Uh, so you want to have the timeout first, uh, the circuit breaker next, and then the retry at the very end. Uh, so that's the reason uh, why we have the retry on the very top, uh, then the 
breaker in the middle, and then the timeout, uh, like I mentioned, uh, uh, is already baked in. Uh, so the order matters. Uh, make a note of that. Uh, don't uh, don't mess don't mix up the orders, right? Uh, okay. So um, I don't have a proper way of uh, testing the circuit breaker uh, because I need to make multiple calls. Uh, but I believe uh, this code should work. Uh, so now, uh, if I go ahead and stop this, and if I go ahead and run this, uh, this has all three resiliency patterns uh, baked in. Uh, the uh, timeout, the circuit breaker, and the retry. Uh, and uh, uh, hopefully this will keep make your uh, applications more robust uh, when making external calls. Uh, and we definitely do want to make uh, the calls uh, more robust, especially when you're making ex external calls, uh, because uh, it is uh, prone to a variety of external factors outside your control. Uh, so it's uh, best to design your applications in a resilient uh, fashion. Okay, thank you. Bye.